Hi everyone and welcome back to this uh, focus in our basics track on grades today. So we want to talk about just the context of grades as they may relate to your experiences as a faculty member. Quite obviously grades are the way that we typically assess work in a class and we use grades obviously to assess whether our students are comprehending the material in terms of their work with the content in your class. Grades also appear on transcripts and impact and can impact student financial aid, scholarships, admissions, and so forth. And we'll talk a little bit later about the importance of turning grades in on time. Grades are typically an A, B, C, D, or F. And you may have heard about some schools out there, including Antioch uh, University, Sarah Lawrence College, Prescott, where they actually have experimented with non-traditional grading systems. So instead of getting their, giving their students a letter grade, they will give them a narrative that describes their work in the class. And many years ago, I had a tutor who was interested in hiring on to tutor for us in anthropology. And what I found challenging was that he had a degree from University of California, Santa Cruz. And at the time Santa Cruz was doing this with their grades, they've since switched to traditional letter grades. But it was a narrative that you read and the narrative detailed the student's skills in the class, it detailed their professionalism, did they respect other students and so forth. And while philosophically I agreed with the idea of it, practically in terms of its execution I just found it a little challenging to read and try to understand exactly how the student was in terms of their qualifications, would they be a good tutor and so forth. So I agree with it conceptually, I just think practically it's sometimes a challenge to have a non-traditional grading system, but certainly it's something we could discuss in a future workshop if you're interested in this topic. Now at LTCC, we don't have a plus minus letter grading system. So in traditional plus minus systems, obviously you have a 4.0 being an A, an A minus is a 3.7 and so forth. Years ago, we had a committee focusing on the, on the idea of switching to plus minus letter grades we didn't take that forward at that time and who knows if it would come back. But I think one challenge is that you lack the numerical and percentile accuracy, that ability to give within an, an A or, or a B, because we don't give A pluses typically, but you know, having three options instead of one. It's I think pretty challenging to do you know, assessment when you realize it all has to fall within one of five categories as opposed to wouldn't be 15 because obviously F doesn't have a plus or a minus, but for the C's, D's, and um, the B's, there's an opportunity, right, to have three um, marks that you could give instead of one. Now, I will say on Canvas, you can actually go in and adjust your percentages, what percentages will actually correlate with your final grade. So that's something to look at. In terms of grading itself, I remember years ago doing a traditional grade book back in the late 90s where I had my grades and I would have columns and rows and I would have to line things up and then actually sit down with a calculator after the fact and figure out all those grades out. That's pretty antiquated. I know some people still like to do that. A better version is probably a, tr uh, a personal spreadsheet. You can have an Excel file, put your grades in there, and that way you can do the calculations as you like. And this is particularly maybe useful if you're a whiz at Excel. Now, Passport and Canvas also have grade books, and I won't show you those today due to confidentiality issues. The one thing I will warn you about is that Passport and Canvas do not communicate with one another. So what you have to do is, if you do your grades in Canvas, if you do the very specific grades, um, set those up by categories, points, what assessments to drop and all that kind of stuff, you could then at the very end of the class, look at your percentages or your final grade, A, B, C, D, or F, and then all you have to do is open up, say, in one window, I have your Canvas grades. In the second window, open up your Passport grades. And so what I do is, is I have those two windows opened up, and then that way I can just transfer the grade from Canvas into Passport. It's totally up to you. If you have a web-enhanced class or a Canvas-enhanced class and you're doing a face-to-face, -face, the same thing. You could track your grades in Canvas and then put the final grades in Passport. Or you could use the gradebook in Passport. It's certainly sophisticated enough to do most things. It'll allow you to set up categories and percentages and all that kind of stuff. So totally up to you, but the options are out there. Just keep in mind Passport and Canvas currently do not communicate with one another. And that could change in the future. So here's a tip on grades. As I mentioned earlier, it's extremely important that grades be turned in by their due date. If you don't do this, what'll happen is students um, getting transcripts and if they're transferring on to another school, some of your final grades may not appear and as a result, those students cannot 
um, successfully transfer to another school. So it really does affect the workflow in admissions and records in the one stop. So please, please, please turn in grades by the due dates that are required um, in the communications you'll get from admissions. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. So here's another tip on grades. Grades can be a source of extreme student emotion. I will often get students who come into my office and say, hey, I need an A in this class to stand financial aid, or I need an A in this class because it's in my major and I have to transfer. So what I really recommend to you is to avoid any time that you might spend on grades if they're related to the quote, I need an A to blank kind of argument. It's just really not something we can get into. We are not in the business of giving grades based on financial need. That's what scholarships are for. We're not in the, we, we cannot pass people on just because they have a perceived need. And I always tell people that if you do that, the analogy I used to hear from a professor of biology who has since retired is if she would pass people on in her anatomy and physiology class and they were in the engineering track and you passed them on because you felt, you know, sorry for them or whatever. And those, those particular students who are passed on and didn't learn the material end up building a faulty bridge as engineers, there's you know a consequence to passing people on if they didn't do the work. So the bottom line is tell your students you need to do the work, you're expected to do it. I'm gonna give you the grade based on the objective criteria that I've set up for you. It will not be given on for any other reason. And I think it's just really important that we as faculty are committed to that. Now another tip for grades is with your syllabus, when you're writing your class syllabus, be sure to have as watertight a syllabus as possible. I've sat in on many grade disputes, and if ever the instructor's grade is overturned on an assignment or in the class, it's for the reason that he or she did not have a watertight syllabus. There was wiggle room in the syllabus such that the student could argue, well, you didn't tell me I couldn't turn in a late paper, or you didn't tell me I had to do this to get an A in the class or a B or whatever. So definitely have everything laid out and have as extensive a syllabus as possible, particularly in the case of grade disputes that might come up in the future. Another tip is to explain to students that while grades are important, they're not everything. So part of that emotion behind grades is I think sometimes we get caught up as instructors, as faculty, in the idea that, you know, I want everyone to get an A in the class. And that's debatable whether you should say that in a class. I'm not going to get into that today. But if you get into grades to the extent that all you talk about in your class is, okay, here's what's on the exam and here's what you need to get an A in the class, then in a sense you're teaching to the test. And in the world of K-12, Sometimes some instructors have been called out for doing that, for teaching to the test, just getting their students to, quote, succeed. I would argue that success um, is less about actually getting someone to get a good grade on the test, but more do they get a good grade on the test and also learn the material. And more organically and authentically, did they study in such a way that they weren't just studying for what they thought was going to be on the test. That might be a pretty high or idealistic bar to have for students, but it's a bar I personally have. So what I would say is explain to students that yes, grades are important, but I also want you authentically to learn the content in my class so you'll be prepared, you'll be a better citizen, you'll be a better engineer, you'll be a better whatever, and not just you're good at taking tests, and that could be an issue. Now philosophically, there's some articles out there, this is from Education Week, a professor saying, teachers should put the focus on learning and not on letter grades. And I agree with that completely. If you're only teaching to the test, if you're only focusing on, here's what you need um, to do in the class to get an A, the students are probably missing out a little bit. So I think in the conversations about grades that we have in the future, we should certainly think about these issues. We should think about being effective in our grading policies, turning our grades in, but we shall also focus on the bigger philosophical issues relative to student learning, well, such that trap of only teaching to the test or only, only focusing on grades um, instead of say our content or issues that we want our students to address in our class. So thanks for listening today. I'll be back with future videos on topics like these and many others.